Well, let's go back to the power crisis here in South Africa at the moment. You're about to see stage two in place until 4 p.m. After that, it's going to be stage four. Uh, the Insta International Institute for Sustainable Development says more battery storage systems are needed if we want to try and use uh, the best of batteries for both business and households. We all know it's increasing, but here's the problem. It's not actually very well coordinated. Why is that happening? Well, Richard Horsley uh, joining me now. He's a policy advisor at the Institute, uh, speaking to us uh, from over in Austria, I believe. Uh, good morning to you in South Africa, over in Austria, uh, Richard, and thanks. I appreciate your time. Uh, what do we mean it's not coordinated? Where are we getting this wrong, do you think? Good morning. Good morning. In, in the sense for coordinated, that is referring to um, the consumer uh, storage. So in other words, storage at uh, a residence uh, or business premise. And that has come about as a response to load shedding, but individuals and companies are generally funding that themselves. And it means that it is, it is done in a sort of organic basis. Those who can afford it do it. But that is different from if you add storage to the national grid, it can be done in a coordinated, synchronized manner uh, for the benefit of public supply. So when we talk about uncoordinated is referring to that segment of the storage market where it's um, consumers and industry who are putting it on their own roofs. Well, they're putting the solar on their own roofs mm -hmm. and they're adding batteries to extend uh, the time which they can use their own um, solar power. How easy is that to do uh, in, in your experience on both a, let's say, a municipal level, a local level, even a national level as well? Is there a case study that you can refer me to? Well, I mean, in South Africa, we've seen a lot of businesses are, are adding um, uh, batteries themselves because the price of batteries in the last couple of years has come down a lot. Where things are lagging behind in South Africa is for municipalities to do this and to do this at a national scale. Now, there is a tender out for 513 megawatts of batteries to be added to the national grid, but this was already meant to have come online last year. So it, the addition of new batteries to the, the national grid is just happening behind schedule. Um, and that's one of the issues we'd like to raise is that because batteries can add so many benefits to the grid, uh, it can help the existing grid, it can help the existing power stations. Um, this should be done, we, we should ramp up the rate at which we are doing this. Uh, let's just talk about the technology for a second as well, because I feel like I need to go back a couple of years uh, here as, as well. Uh, Richard, we talk about the cost of, uh, is it lithium ion or ion lithium? I'm not too sure which I'm, where I'm supposed to say it. I think it's the same thing, though, uh, because they were incredibly expensive about 10 years ago. Then we had COVID. There was a shortage there. And then obviously with our stage six blackouts in this country, in South Africa, we weren't able to get these batteries. Uh, so is it still a big issue globally or is it just us that needs to catch? up here in South Africa? Well, yeah, so lithium ion batteries are the market leader for, for stationary phase batteries at the moment. And since 2013, the prices internationally have dropped by about 80%. Uh, in the last year, they have uh, flattened out, but, and that was due to supply chains in COVID. But the analysis globally is that from next year, the prices should start to decrease again. But already at the level they're at, they are cost competitive. Uh, many countries are adding them rapidly. If you look at the graphs of the uptake, it's, it's almost exponential at the moment. And, and ESCOM and the country are doing this. It is just given the crisis we are in, if we could speed this up and, and add them faster, that would obviously, the benefits would come to us sooner. Well, yeah, with you talking about speeding uh, things up, my next question was going to be about the timeline. Just realistically, knowing the situation in our country, knowing the constraints uh, around getting it done on, on such a large scale in a country like South Africa, what do you imagine a timeline could look like? Everyone watching at home is going wonderful. Is this, could it happen in the next year, next two years, five years? Where, what would be your best guess if you had one? A lot of it depends on the procurement process and how that is set up. A lot of the batteries at the moment, um, the parts are, uh, the, the, the cells and the packs are imported and there are local assemblers who, who put them together. So once you get the procurement streamlined and all of that, it can be reasonably fast to do them. I mean, definitely within within a year or two, you can you can do this at scale. It's 
renewable energy plants, you can build a whole power plant uh, within two years, and this will certainly be under that time frame because you can locate these batteries at existing substations where they're required. So there's a lot less, you know, infrastructure build required to add storage if you compare it to, say, building a whole power station. Mm. Uh, one of the issues that we have here in South Africa, more from a private sector as well, I suppose small to medium-sized enterprises, is with the storage systems that are currently in place, uh, whether it's uh, the lithium-ion batteries or the slightly cheaper batteries, because of the power going out on such a regular basis, these backup systems start taking a bit of a hit. Uh, I'm talking about, for example, garage motors, for example, gate motors, uh, all those sort of things. If we were to put these grid batteries uh, into to, into play at such a large scale, but we're still dealing with these repeated power cuts all day. Uh, how does that system work? Are we just going to not start ripping through grid batteries quicker than we should? I mean, obviously, in a, a, a period now where there is extensive load shedding, all your infrastructure is taking strain. But the idea being that by adding storage, you make the power system more resilient, you give it more flexibility, and hopefully this will get us out of the load shedding situation sooner mm. so that all of these detrimental effects we're experiencing to equipment could come to an end sooner. Now, we're not saying storage is the silver bullet. It's not going to solve all the problems by itself, but it is one of the avenues we can use, and we should be using as many avenues as possible in parallel to, to get to a solution sooner. Uh, just in closing, I see there's obviously a paper that's been written about this as well. You and I, from what I understand, Richard, we've been talking primarily about uh, the first part of this, so why grid-located batteries are a focus area for the country. I see also, though, a part two going to look at uh, how to maximize the benefits, minimize the risks, and create a more enabling environment uh, for deployment uh, as well. Do you think we as a country are primed? for something like this? Or do you start getting a sense that here's everything laid down, all the plans are there, but as is always the case in South Africa, and I don't mean to be a pessimist, everything gets caught up in the details and the red tape. Last question to you. Well, certainly there's some great opportunities for South Africa because one of the other types of batteries is called a vanadium redox flow battery, and South Africa's got one of the largest uh, resources of vanadium in the world. So here's a great opportunity for South Africa to use our own resources to develop a supply chain. So not only would you get the uh, storage benefits from those batteries, but it's, it's a new industry and there are other groups doing detailed work on exactly how this localization could work. So definitely with the will, there is a lot of opportunity for us to, to build industries as well as assist with the supply crisis. Yeah, right now we're trying to find all the solutions that we can. I really appreciate your time all the way over in Austria uh, for us this morning. Uh, Richard Horsley, Policy Advisor at the Institute uh, or the International Institute for Sustainable Development. All the plans are there. It's being done around the world. It can be done uh, as well. It's just a case of how do we do it here in South Africa. But Richard providing some great insight as to how that can happen.